Hey, DIY Dad here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Creality Falcon, and you might rightly be asking yourself, what does that have to do with the DeLorean DMC-12? And the answer is nothing. So is it possible that I placed it there purely to get you to click on this video? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. But since you're here, why don't you come along while I unbox this thing and talk about what it has to offer. So for our video today, we're going to be working with the Creality Falcon. And just like with the longer Ray 5, I'm going to take you through unboxing an initial setup and the initial step of creating something with this. And then in future videos, we'll explore more of the advanced features, how it works, how you interact with it, how you start crafting with it, similar to what we're going to be doing with the Ray 5, which will give us an opportunity to compare and contrast these two sort of entry level uh, devices. So first and foremost, I'm going to cut this thing open and we'll take a look at what's inside the box. All right, so once you get the lid uh, opened up on this, inside you're gonna find some basic packing material. So there's this piece of cardboard, it's just a spacer, nothing that you need to maintain. So we'll just throw that aside. And then we have a couple foam blocks uh, that are going to be protecting the upper part of the arm here. Easier to do if you have two hands, pull that off. And then you'll see the first big difference between the Creality product and the longer. With the longer, when we took it out of the box, we had to assemble it. The Creality is going to come pre-assembled. So I'm going to pull this out of here and we'll pull out all of the individual pieces and we'll walk through what they send with it. Uh, but right off the bat, if you're somebody who's not super technical or mechanically inclined, this is going to be a much easier entry point for you because you don't have to put it together. So I'm going to get this out of the box. We'll get the box off to the side and we'll talk about what else you'll find within. All right, so this is what you're going to find inside the box for the Creality Falcon. So you've got the laser engraver itself, all the armature, laser module, and lens. Uh, those do have to get installed, but it's it's a toolless install, so that's not a big deal. I'll show you how that works. Power cords, uh, instruction manual, which is cool because that one doesn't come with one. You have to get it electronically, uh, as well as a couple pieces of sample material for you to use. Uh, some stickers so you can feel good about yourself. And then we have a few tools and this focusing block, which is the other thing that that is missing, uh, which will allow you to get the laser set to the proper focal distance based on the thickness of the material that you're using. And I'll show you how that works here in a minute. So super cool. The other thing that this uh, product gives you, which the longer does not, uh, a few little tchotchkes, like they've got the built-in level here, which is going to allow you to make sure that this is going to move appropriately. These are a little bit susceptible to being set off level, uh, which can be an issue if you're moving these around a lot. But the biggest thing it gives you is right there. So with the Creality Falcon, you get this piece of metal, which goes flat down onto your work surface and the honeycomb panel, which you're actually going to set your material on. Now that is notably missing from the longer version. And the consequence of that can be seen right there where a piece of my material shifted off and I engraved pretty deeply into my butcher block uh, workbench surface here. So right off the bat, they're going to give you a little bit of a better setup, again, for the same price point. Uh, that honeycomb piece and the deflector you can get from longer for an additional about $60, I believe. So having that included is a really nice touch. So I'm gonna get that set where it's supposed to be. So that piece of metal uh, just has some protective film on it that you can take off or leave on. That'll go down here. The honeycomb goes on top of it, and then this will sit on top of that. So I'm going to get that in place, and then we'll check back. All right, so this is what you'll be looking at when things are aligned properly. So you can see I've got my aluminum sheet down on my surface. I've got the honeycomb above that, and then this entire frame fits over the top. Now, interestingly, this does rise up your work surface quite a bit, which means that you're going to be a little bit limited on the thickness of the material that you can use underneath it. If you're using a thicker material, this can be flipped upside down and still allow airflow to get underneath it. Um, or you can do risers under the frame all the way around, again, making sure you end up level to bring the entire machine up. What the honeycomb does for you is twofold. First, it lifts the uh, focal dis distance of your laser up a bit so that if you shoot past your material, by the time it hits down onto your work surface, that beam is going to be unfocused and isn't likely to cut or burn as badly as it would if you were, say, 
you know, doing things right at surface level. Uh, the other thing it's going to do is allow air to come up under your material, which affects the way your material heat soaks and can give you a cleaner engraving um, and cleaner cut, less likely to burn and less likely to scorch. So you should get a better finished product using a honeycomb like this. And then again, it's a much safer process. So if you're dealing with thicker material, you can flip this over or uh, stand this up higher and then you'll just move the laser back down. So next then we're gonna get the laser itself assembled. So I'm gonna get that unbagged. We'll bring it over here and I'll show you how it goes together. All right, so this is pretty cool. So here's your 10 watt laser module. Uh, you can see it's got a slide bracket on the back. That's gonna end up sliding up over this piece. And then you have these two thumb screws which will tighten everything down. Uh, this is the top, that's your dangerous end. That's the bottom where the actual laser comes out. You also have this guard. This guard serves two different purposes. One, it helps you with focal distance. So it's going to uh, push the material away from the laser to where the laser is preset to be at its sharpest point to get you your best performance out of it. It's also going to protect your eyes from looking directly at the material or having the laser reflect off the material and hit you in the eye because that can cause blindness and a bunch of other things. If you look at this, there is a carved cutout. That cutout is going to face away from you. So laser's oriented this way with the thumb screws off to the right. This guy is gonna sit just like this. And then there's little magnets, which is kind of cool. So it just snaps right onto the end. There's no tools necessary. You just get it lined up and off you go. Uh, to put this on that panel, you will have to lift the frame up, slide this up from the bottom and then tighten the screws just to hold it in place. And the last thing you'll have to do is connect the power there's a little white plug here and a little white cable there. They are keyed. They can only go together in one way. Just don't force it. If it's giving you resistance, it means you have it connected wrong. So I'm going to lift this up. We'll get this slid on top and then we'll get that connected and I'll be back. Assembled, your finished product should look like this. So I've got my cable connected on the top. There's two little tabs that stick off of the cable. Those point that way if you're having trouble getting this oriented. But like I said, it's only going to go together one way. So if it fights you at all, you've got it wrong. So this now is in place and we can look to actually set some material and get this thing plugged in and see how it works. Now that's gonna lead us to uh, kind of a stopping pot or a spot where I'm gonna have to jump forward a bit. On the longer, you have this color screen on the front, which makes it very easy to navigate the TF card that they give you with the device to find things like a longer logo image that we can print. On this device, there is no screen. So they spent their money more on things like the honeycomb, and some of the ease of how this thing goes together. You get a few of the few less bells and whistles for standalone operation. You can still use a TF card. There's a connection down here on the side for it. It will by default use the most recent image on that TF card. I believe there's probably one that we can burn, but I don't want to do that uh, without knowing exactly what I'm getting into here. Um, if you are using that, there are instructions in the manual on how this works. It's all based on this home button on the front and how many times you press it which is a little bit uh, tricky for me. I don't like that lack of control. Um, I will probably use this the way most of you will with it connected to a computer. So um, I'll bring my laptop out, we'll get it connected up and see what we've got on this TF card as far as software to get an initial burn working. From a standpoint of actually getting the machine set up to do that though, uh, there's power cord that goes here off the side, USB here's on the side as well that give you all of the cables for that. Uh, power button or power switch is over here on the left as kind of a final cutoff. That's going to turn the device on once everything is plugged. And then the last thing you have to deal with is setting the initial focal distance. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So this is one of the pieces of material that they give you. This is a piece of basswood. It is two millimeters thick. And then they give you this stepped block, which is your focusing block. And you'll see it's written on the top. And what it's telling you here is for various different thicknesses, this is where you set it. So if I'm going to be engraving, so I'm gonna be printing an image on the top and not cutting through this material and wanna use this highest setting, that will also allow me cutting for material that is one to three millimeters thick. So depending on the strength of my laser, this is a two millimeter thick board. So this highest setting is going to be the proper point for it to cut through this uh, and still then be unfocused by the time it gets to our lower, lower surface under the honeycomb here. If this was a thicker piece of wood that I was cutting through, I would set for this cutting thickness of four to six millimeters, and then the, my thickest material I'm going to try to cut through, which I think goes to about eight to 10 millimeters, 
that's going to be this bottom setting. So for us, what I would do to set my laser height here is I would bring the laser down and across. And I'm going to go in here and place this block on top of the material that I'm looking to engrave, right? So it's on the basswood. And then we're going to loosen the side and let it just go to where it contacts that block. And we'll tighten this back up again. Take the block out. And that's now the proper height for it to do in engraving or cutting on a block this size. So that's going to set us up for success for the next part. I'm going to get a demo image going here and then we'll come back when it's actually cutting or engraving rather. So the one thing that test really revealed is uh, how powerful this thing is and how careful you want to go with these. These aren't toys, obviously, uh, but even using default settings, like my first test, just because I didn't have the speed right, uh, caused this situation, which you can kind of see scorching here on the honeycomb. If I hadn't had that, any of these spots where it burned straight through would have been burned into my desktop. So having this just as a safety measure is a fantastic thing, and I'm I'm very happy that Creality choose, or chooses chose to include it as an important thing. It seems like they're spending their money in the right spot. So you can kind of see uh, how detailed this is and how well it prints this. And then using the same speed setting on my logo, um, you can see how sharp the lines are from this. It's a really nice setup. So, so far I'm very impressed with it. Like I said, I'll have some additional videos as time goes on walking through uh, how to do speed and power tests. You can avoid situations like that and deal with the results that you're hoping for. So this being the end of a DIY dad video, I of course owe you a dad joke. So why did the farmer, after an unsuccessful harvest, decide to go into rap music? He realized he had a whole bunch of sick beats. Right, remember with any DIY project, most important step is just to do it. No one's gonna see the flaws unless you point them out. Uh, if you're using a machine like this, First step, always safety. Make sure you're wearing your goggles or your safety glasses, rather. Um, watch angles on these, especially if you have kids. Also, remember these are pretty powerful things and they can easily start fires. So be cautious, go slow, uh, take time, do your research. There's going to be a bunch more content on my channel to assist with that process and taking you from, hey, I unboxed this thing to I'd like to actually create things for my family or craft fairs, things like that. So like and subscribe. That content should be coming up soon. Uh, otherwise, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.